Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope everybody's having a fabulous day. Today, we're going to be bringing back a project that's very similar to one that we did during Robot Week. The reason we're bringing it back is because it was such a hit. Everybody loved it, and I think you will too. In fact, I've enjoyed doing it all over again, except this time, we're not doing robots. No, no, we're in outer space, man. We're doing rocket ships. So before I dive in and tell you what you need, let's go ahead and do our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes, but deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome. A big shout out to you know who, Ticonderoga, you guys. I'm going to be using markers today for my printing. The best markers for this kind of printing. Easy, hands down, Prang. Y'all know who makes Prang markers? Ticonderoga. I love these markers because when I print with them, the colors always turn out beautiful, bold, and bright. So thank you so much, Ticonderoga, for supporting me by giving me some of those amazing markers. And have you guys set up your own digital art gallery yet? If you haven't, you might want to check out Art to Remember. The best way to remember your art is to save it, but it gets tough because it's probably starting to pile up. I know mine is. You can save it digitally. That means right here on your computer or your device. That way you can always go back and look at it and have it printed on a whole bunch of things. Setting up your online gallery is free. Thank you, Art to Remember. All right, let's take a sneak peek at what we're creating today. We will be doing a choleograph print. So we are going to be using a cereal box or any kind of thin cardboard to create our rocket ship. We'll be using a pair of scissors to cut out those shapes and we'll be using some glue to stick them down. From there, we're going to be doing some printing. So you'll need a sheet of aluminum foil, some paper and some markers. These are the kind of prints that I was able to make from my rocket ship printing plate. Whew, it's gonna be a fun one, so grab all of those supplies and get that pinky ready. <clears throat> I pinky promise to do my very best to keep a positive attitude and to finish what I start. Air kiss, people. Mwah! All right, guys, go ahead, get your cereal box, scissors, and glue. That's what we'll begin with, and let's get started. To begin my choleograph print, I first have to create my printing plate. For that, you'll need probably a cereal box or anything that maybe is the lid of another box, something that's a thinner piece of cardboard, not thick. So I've got the back side of a pancake mix box here and another piece of kind of thicker board for my base. Now I'm going to begin by cutting out some shapes. Cutting out this cardboard isn't always very easy, but I think you can do it. It'll also help you build up those nice, strong art hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut off that little piece there. And then I'm going to work on cutting out a series of rectangles. So I'm beginning to think about how wide I want my rocket ship to be or what I want the width to be. I think for the size of my base, I want my rocket ship to be about three fingers wide. You could use four. Go ahead and decide about what width you wanna make your rectangle. I'm gonna draw a line there and another line there and maybe go ahead and connect. I'm going to cut out a couple, probably three of these rectangle shapes. Not because I'm going to be making three rocket ships, although you could make as many as you like, but because I really wanna have a whole bunch of cardboard shapes cut out and ready for me to assemble for my rocket ship. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace a couple extra, and then when I'm finished, I'm going to cut out more shapes. The shapes that I will be using a lot today are what's called geometric shapes. Geometric shapes are shapes like rectangles, triangles, circles, and squares. Those kind of shapes are called geometric shapes. Shapes that you would see outside in nature, the shape of a leaf, the shape of a cloud, the shape of even fire, 
Those are called organic shapes. You can remember because we find things that are organic outside. Organic means something that's living and growing. So I guess maybe fire wouldn't qualify, but it does have that beautiful kind of organic shape is what we would call it. All right, so I've got my first rectangle and when I lay it here, I realize that that's probably too long for my rocket ship. So I'm gonna use one rectangle to cut out other shapes. Maybe I'll begin by cutting this in half. Hmm, and now maybe cut that in half. Now I've got a couple of squares for building my rocket ship. I'm gonna cut some smaller rectangles. I could even take some of these smaller rectangles and cut them into teeny tiny little squares. So spend some time and just cut out a variety of geometric shapes. Look at them all trying to run away from home. And then what you might want to do is just kind of organize your pile of shapes. I'm going to take a moment to cut out some more shapes. You might even want to think about cutting out some circle shapes. If you decide to make a circle, I find it's a little easier to draw it first if your finger will get out of the way and then cut it out. Then I'll have maybe a window for my rocket ship. I could cut out smaller circles for little buttons or switches or whatever other details I might like. I've gotten a couple of squares cut. I'm gonna grab another rectangle. Hmm, what if I go ahead and cut this in half and then cut from this corner to that corner? Let's see. So now I have some triangles and these triangles might look really good on the side of my rocket ship. All right, so now that I have a pretty good amount of things cut out, I think what I'm going to do is start to assemble. And then if I am putting my rocket ship together, if I realize that I wanna cut out more things, I can stop and do that. All right, so I've got this big guy. I already decided he's a little too big. So I'm gonna cut that part off. And now I'm deciding on my composition, the placement of things. So that's going to be my ship. I'll add these two. I want it to be looking like it's blasting off, so I've tilted it just a little bit. I want to make sure my pieces can fit. I might have to make them a little bit smaller. So what if I trim a little bit here? And I'll do the same thing on this one. It's a good thing I didn't glue things down. Right now, I'm trying to figure out my composition, and because I'm using paper and I'm about to use glue, we could also call this kind of art a collage. When an artist is doing something like a collage, it's important that they lay everything out first before they start to glue. I think I want a triangle at the top, so to cut out a triangle, I'll find the middle top line of this shape and cut to there, cut to there. I think that would look right there. Ooh, these triangles here on the side that I just snipped off could totally be used for the wings of my rocket ship. Maybe I'll add a couple of more windows or rectangles. So many different options. When you feel like you've got enough details added, I think these guys are gonna be my stars for my background. Ooh, maybe I'll cut out a circle for a planet. Then you can start to glue things down. I wanna have fire coming out of my rocket ship. So what I think I'm gonna do is draw it. So I'm gonna take a piece of cardboard, draw two lines at the bottom, and then I'm going to connect those two lines with a fire kind of line, what I call a dancing zigzag. There we go, and that can go at the bottom. All right, I'm now going to start to glue my pieces in place. I thought I would show you a little cool trick that you can do, but it's important that you let all of the pieces dry, maybe just like five minutes to make sure they're all anchored into place. Before you cover your rocket ship in foil, why don't we try making a rubbing? Take a sheet of paper. Copy paper works great because it's a little bit thinner, but I'm using a piece of sketch paper and it'll work fine and some crayons. You'll wanna have a crayon that doesn't have any of the paper wrapper on it. When you make a rubbing, and we've done these a lot here on this channel, but when you make a rubbing, you wanna make sure that your crayon is laying down like it's shh, it's sleeping. Lay it down and then have your extra hand hold the paper very, very still. Hold it still hand, got it Stevens. Take your sleeping crayon and pressing down nice and hard, rub. 
rub, rub, and you're going to reveal your spaceship underneath. How cool is that? You could do a bunch of rubbings like this. You could also grab another crayon and notice my extra hand is working really hard to keep the paper still. Let's see, where's a nice kind of purpley color that would be good for a galaxy? Add another color too. When you're finished, you could always take this off and color in your planets, color in the other parts, up to you. But I did wanna show you that really cool trick that you can do with your rocket ship. Awesome, that's pretty nifty, right? All right, I'm gonna move this out of the way because we are getting ready to print. For printing, you're going to want to get a sheet of aluminum foil. I'm going to lay my aluminum foil down over my rocket ship. Notice that my aluminum foil is a little bit wrinkly. It's okay. Lay it right on top of your rocket ship and then massage. Oh, rocket ship likey. I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the rocket ship underneath by just rubbing the foil with my fingertips. I don't wanna slice into the foil, so notice I'm not using my fingernails. And now I'm going to tuck the extra foil underneath. To do that, I'm gonna have one hand hold it still while I lift up one side and just bend the foil around to the back. Flip that over, go ahead and finish folding it. Now that I have one side folded, here's a way to do it a little easier on the other side. Just pick it up, bend it down. Well, I said it was easier and then I didn't make it look very easy. Bend it down, there we go. Flatten it and then we'll do the same thing to the top and the bottom. So I'm bending it up, flipping it back to give it a nice clean edge. Now when you color, you will want to use what's called water-based markers. If you don't know what that means, it means just your regular markers. If you have permanent markers, you will not want to use those. So I'm using these markers right here. You can use anything that is not a permanent marker. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm coloring in my rocket ship, coloring in all the different parts. And at first, what you'll notice when you're coloring is that your marker stays nice and bright. Because your marker has water in it, it's going to be nice and wet. But as the water evaporates, your colors are going to fade. In fact, my colors almost always look like they've disappeared. I don't want you to get concerned. Don't worry about it because when we do our printing trick, it will still turn out great. For my rocket ship, you can use any colors you want to, but I've decided that I'm going to use the warm colors. If you don't know what the warm colors are, let me tell you, they are the first three colors in the rainbow. Do you know the order of the colors in the rainbow? The order of the colors in the rainbow are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. I bet some of you know the way to remember the order of the colors in the rainbow. It's Roy G. Biv. That's how you can remember the order of the colors in the rainbow. The first three colors in the rainbow, the Roy of Roy G. Biv, those are the warm colors. So that's what I'm using. And I'm just using those colors because I, they look nice together. You could use any colors you want to. So I'm going to finish up doing that. When I color my fire, I'm definitely going to use the warm colors. They're called the warm colors because I'm trying to find my fire. They remind us of things that are warm or hot, like a fire. So I'm coloring in the flames of my fire. I'm coloring pretty quickly. You could color quickly. You could go slowly and carefully. Regardless of how you color, I'm sure your print will turn out amazing. The cool thing is, is that when you're finished coloring and you're done pulling a print, that's what we call this when you pull the paper up, we call it pulling a print, you can do more prints. I've done lots of prints with my same printing plate and here's how. You just color it all over again. When you color it the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the seventeenth time, 
then you can color it with different colors. You don't have to use the same. One time you might wanna even draw an extra planet. One time you might wanna just draw lines in the background. So every time you do a print, think about how you can color it a little bit differently so that your prints turn out a little bit different each time. Now, when I color the background of this one, I really want to show movement because I want it to look as though my rocket ship is blasting off. So sometimes when you're coloring or making lines, think about what your lines can say about your artwork. If it's something really calm, then you'll probably want to color it calmly, carefully, and neatly. But if it's something that's energized, that shows movement, you might want to use lines that do the same. All right, I'm almost finished. When you are finished coloring yours, you're going to need to get a piece of paper that you'll want to dampen a bit. So there's a lot of different ways you can go around dampening your paper. You could get a damp paper towel that you squeeze most of the water out of. You could get a sponge, which is what I'm going to use. You could even get a little spray bottle with water in it that you could spritz on your paper. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my sheet of paper. Here we go, a nice clean sheet of white paper. I'm gonna take a sponge that I've got sitting in a bowl of water and I'm gonna pick up the sponge and really squeeze most of the water out so it's not dripping. And now I'm going to wipe the sponge on the paper to dampen it. Here's how you'll know when your paper is ready. It should be pretty shiny. So I'm just making sure to wipe it a couple of times, making sure it looks pretty shiny. I'm gonna take my paper and lay it on top of my rocket ship. And when I lay it down, I cannot pick it back up again until I'm finished massaging or rubbing the paper. What I'm doing right now is hopefully, if I've gotten enough water on my paper, is grabbing all of that marker ink up to pull my print. Now, if you pull your print up and you can't see your print, that just means you didn't use enough water on your paper. If your print looks very furry, fuzzy, almost like a wet tie-dye, that means maybe a little bit too much water. Sometimes things just take practice. Let's see how this one turned out. Whoa, would you look at that? It turned out well. I had just the right amount of water, but I did make it look pretty easy. Notice I've had lots and lots of practice. Some of my prints were a little fuzzy with too much water. Some of my prints were kind of dry because I didn't have enough. Now the cool thing is, is I can wipe this off, color it, dampen a piece of paper and print again and again and again, maybe changing the background up a little bit each time. I hope you guys had a blast. See what I did there? And don't forget to subscribe so that you can keep up with more fun art adventures with me, Cassie. See you guys real soon.